What's going on? It's me, Mikey Pipes. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning. Monday, April 10th, 2023. We have a very fun and exciting day today. I got all the crew here. Our new hire didn't show up today. He said his car wouldn't start, but he wants to know if he can come in tomorrow and wish me a happy Easter. So I can't hate. We've kind of a light day today anyway because it's right after the holidays, April, but we are going on some central air conditioning service calls today. So stick around, smash that thumbs up button, and check out Mikey Pipes Philanthropy, where we do free plumbing and HVAC services to those who don't who can't afford it. But first, we gotta say something to Daniel. Daniel's changing his license plates. He got a new one. I'm, I can't show it, but Daniel, I got a surprise for you inside the shop. Want to take a guess what it is? Another one? Another what? Ticket? No. <laughs> no, you're good. All right, Daniel. Now that we got all that out of the way, he doesn't want to show his face. I got to show you something. Come here. Now, when you see it, I want to catch the expression on your face. Oh, I saw them already. No, but you didn't see them all laying out like this. Yeah. I had Amrad make my own capacitors. Look at them. I am basically shipping capacitors out of my tokas. Actually, I'm not. And actually, it took four months for them to deliver this incomplete order. There are still some things that are missing. But I have every effing size from 5 to 80 in singles. And from 35, 30 over 5, to 80 over 10 in those. There are a few, there's a few missing. There's a few missing, I got to admit. But it took almost four months for them to deliver all these Amrak capacitors. And by the way, you're looking at a gold mine, right? <laughs> these are very expensive. <laughs> the original order was a quantity of 10 each. I think I would really be having, I'll be in a storm, I'll be in a hurricane, a tsunami of Amrak capacitors proudly made in America. So ladies and gentlemen, if you have a difficult, if you're having a difficult time finding these Amrak sets, I will do a full run, which is one of each. A full run of one of each for $990 delivered. A full run of, of one of each for $990 delivered, okay? For a limited time, because I'm not selling all of them. But I will sell a few of them because I need, to, I need to feed the people. I need to promote American products, great American products like Amrad. Now, did we check to see if it has the CRT? You want to open this up? You know that compressor thingy terminal? Oh, don't, tell me they gave me old, old ones. Yeah, it has it. It has it? Yeah. Oh, F yeah. Yeah. And what it run out at. Look at that. I love that. You know, you don't get this from the Titan <clears throat> or the Titan HD, the Titan Pros. Only... Oh, does the actual reading? Look at that. Actual reading. Actual reading right there. <clears throat> we proudly use Amrad capacitors. American radio... American what? A uh, radionic? Radionic company. U.S. made capacitor. You like those capacitors? Dissipation factor. Yes, dissipation factor. We have to figure out what that means. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. So this morning, in this video, we're heading to an existing client who is in Merrick, which is in the south shore of Nassau County on Long Island in the state of New York. We're based out of Valley Stream, and it's about a 25 to 35 minute drive, depending on traffic. Um, we typically go out, you know, uh, parts of Queens, which is west of Valley Stream. And we typically go as far as, you know, 231, which is Deer Park Avenue in Suffolk County, which is closer to Daniel and Peter's home. Um, but a majority of our service calls are in the Valley Stream, you know, south western corner of Nassau County. We're going to head on the Sun, the Sun State Parkway and uh, we should be there in about 20 minutes. Hi. Hi. Hey. How are you, Hi. Mikey Pipes? That's me. How are you? How are you? Hey guys, how you doing? Nice I, to oh, I forgot I was supposed to give my card, but I yeah, didn't. Right. Right. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. What's up, doggies? He's like a little, he's a tiny little dogs, by the way. And they're probably like eight years old, right? Yeah. yeah of course they are. That's so crazy. Two of them are eight, yeah. Hi. Oh, that's funny that you guessed it. She's actually the mother for that one. Yeah. And that's yours. No. She's got a bad You leg, got three so dogs. She... See, I want to have three dogs. I got two. We have four of them. What, what kind of dog do you have? Uh, we have mini golden doodles. Oh, that's lucky. Is that your son? No. Oh, I was going to say. <laughs> this, this, is, uh, this is a Peter the Sponge. The Sponge. He's the Sponge. We call him the Sponge. He's absorbent. <laughs> like absorbent, you know? Yeah. 
All right, so we're here for a wall hung boiler um, yes. service and maintenance, and then outdoor AC units. Yeah, so our outdoor AC units, we've been having issues with them. They, in the in summer, they don't perform really well. Okay. So like they're fine when the temperature is a certain level. So we have some like like if it gets hot outside, they'll cool to a degree and then they won't. So let's say it's like, give me give me an example of temperatures. If it's like, X like degree. 78, 90, 80 degrees, it'll cool the house, no problem. But if it's like 85 or above, so up there, then it starts working too hard. It what what so temperature have it set to, and what is it getting to? Uh, in the summertime. Yeah. Uh, we like it pretty cool in here. What do you try? What do you, what what temperature? Like 70. Okay, and what does it get to? Uh, it'll struggle to get to like 74. Oh really? Yeah. You have two zones. Yeah, we got upstairs and downstairs. What's up with that right there? Who put that in? What? That vent. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that vent. What's up with that vent? Doesn't that look retarded? I know. It does look retarded. There's all kinds of issues. With that. Peter, I think I now, I think I know now why they're not cooling. I, I think I oh, look, because they can't breathe. I can't breathe. Oh my God. What were they thinking here? How do you have exchange of air? How, do you, how, how is this acting as a heat exchanger when 25% of the machine can't breathe on these Lux airs? That's the problem. But we will, uh, we're going to spend some time here. We're going to acid wash. Can you even get to the electric panels? Uh oh. oh no. What were they thinking? Did they put the screws there too? No, see, these covers are off. <sighs> wow. All right, well, at least it's 410A. Crazy. So let me ask you a question. It's a flood zone. That's what oh, I know it's a flood zone. Okay. All right? But let me ask you a question. If, if, you, if you were breathing through a straw <laughs> and you ran a marathon, and, and normally you could breathe through a straw, Right, and then you ran a marathon because it's hot out, right? Yeah. You'd be gasping for air. You'd probably faint. Right. That's what's going on with these machines. Twenty-five percent of the surface area can have exchange of heat because they're smack up against the wall. They're so close to the wall that whoever put them in, the access covers on the other side, half of it is not screwed in. Wow, she's wow, she gives you cash like she's that. Damn, she takes care of you like that. Like that. Wow, I gotta get me one of those. <laughs> Trust me, it's all mine. <laughs> well, not according to her. <laughs> but that's what's wrong here. Well, that's part of it. We we will take these apart and we will clean them, yeah. the coils. But uh, without it, it, without having them further away from the house, they'll never do well. I would put them over there if you could. I would love to. Put you just can't, but you can't, uh, you can't tell the town though. Because oh, okay. permits, you'll never be able to legally put them on the other side of the house. All right, so we have a three-ton system and another three-ton system. All right, and we have a three-ton house. I uh, took a look. This is a crawl space here. I gave a price to install two brand new condensing units there and there. Uh, you know, plus electric, plus a platform. Um, he wants me to just try to, you know, give these things some more life. And, you know, the micro channel coil, you can see, you know, we have a lot of dirt build up on there. I can't even imagine what the house side of the condensing coil looks like. But what I have done so far, uh, the first unit here, I, I just want to take a look at the capacitor here. So let's check out this capacitor and see what that's reading. Maybe we'll start using some of those AMRADs. All right, so I took out my dual capacitor and I'm checking between common and fan when I should have five and I have 4.3. Uh, between common and herm, I should have 45 and I have 42. So we, we could be plus or minus 10%. 10% of five is 0.5, right? So we're under that, we're 4.3. The capacitor needs to go. I'm also noticing here, we also have a hard start capacitor and uh, why that's in there, I guess we have a hard starting uh, compressor. All right, let's go to the truck. Let's get some, some capacitors. I'm gonna do a truck tour of this in the near future, so stick around onto Mikey's Garage channel. Here's my all my AMRAD capacitors. I need a 45.5, put that right there. 
I stock one of each size. Uh, it sucks when I need two of them, but we can always make it. Make sure you smash that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. There's no course or obligation. Thank you. All right, so there's my new Amrai capacitor. I also, if I cover up the size with the band iron, I like to write with a Sharpie right in here, you know, the size of it and the date it was installed. So I'm gonna grab my Sharpie, put that in there. Next is this capacitor, sorry, this contactor. We're gonna check out the ohm resistance across the terminals, the coil. We're gonna remove, it's hard because the way they put the stupid system in here, but we're gonna take off one coil there, side of the coil, and the other side here, I'm gonna check resistance on that. Let's do that right now. I like to see between 12 and 18, and we're at 17.6, so the rate, the resistance across my coil, my 24 volt coil is good. Did you catch the wiring mistake that I deliberately made? Did you catch it? If you didn't, let me show you the fix. So, one of the unique features of AMRAD dual capacitors, right, is that we have a fourth terminal called CPT, compressor, compressor, compressor protector terminal. When you have a two wire hard start, like you have right here, with this, one wire is going to go to CPT and the other wire is going to go to HERM, just like that in that wiring diagram, okay? That's the wiring difference that I want to show you on AMRAD capacitors with CPT. It's a great thing. Works great. All right, we're going to do a uh, chemical washing now using the Viper. We're using the maximum strength Venom Pack condenser cleaner. I got the hot water. We're using hot water off a tankless water heater in the mechanical room on the other side of this wall. We're going through a window. Don't ask, don't tell. All right, I'm going to grab these leaves out of here, and then I'm going to hose, rinse this coil off, and then hit it up with the... Uh... All right, so we're doing a heavy-duty cleaning, extreme duty, as you can see there. We're using 12 ounces of the Venom Pack. I have that filled with water almost to the top, and then I put in 12 ounces of chemical. There's a little side notch... Uh, um, indicators right there of 32 ounces, 20, uh, 28, 24. So now that that's filled, we're gonna give that a good coating with the Venom Pack. We wanna get that whole coil clean, paying most attention to the house side of the coil, because that's where I believe most of the dirt is. And something is better than nothing. You could see just by the rinsing how much dirt came off of this coil. I can't even imagine What's going on in there? Look at all that dirt on the siding of the house. Wow, it's incredible. These things have been dying, struggling for air for uh, God knows how long, but now they're gonna be clean. And eventually, eventually we'll put these over here and we'll give them two new ones. All right, so we got that good foaming action going on here. Nice, good rinse. I don't really know about the hot water is good or bad for it, but we have access to hot water. Hot water is, can't hurt, so we're using the hot water to clean these coils, and hopefully we'll get this nice and clean because they're filthy. Filthy. And uh, we got the AMRAD capacitor in. This one, borderline good. We're going to recommend to replace it when we come back for a uh, secondary visit. Uh, we have some issues with the tankless water heater inside. Uh, it needs a new heat exchanger, so... Um, you know, it is what it is with that, but we'll be back here. All right, so the first unit is nice and rinsed. And uh, this is what we accumulated out of both units, the debris. And there's only one tree nearby, so <laughs> uh, make it nice and clean. You know, builds that relationship and uh, do the proper job. And you know what? You'll be rewarded. So we're we'll cleaning out this one, put it back together, let them both run. It's too cold to do uh, a proper refrigeration check. It's 55 degrees. And um... all right, so we are just about finished up here. Um, we did look at a few things off camera. Number one, a frozen three quarter inch, well, frozen, not anymore. A, a split three quarter inch Watts 007 uh, M2 uh, double check valve located in the crawl space. It's their third, they're going on their third one now. The, the piping in the crawl space is all loopy loopy loop like that and no wonder why it's not draining uh out and it's freezing up so we're going to be doing that within the next day or two we're also going to add him a force free hose force he doesn't have one here and 
How do you have a beautiful backyard like this and don't have a forestry hose faucet or any means of a water connection with a hose? Come on, use your noggin. Come on, guys. And who is the dumb moron who put these in? Are you stupid or something? But nonetheless, I just got this text notification from, from uh, Service Pal. Service Pal, sorry, from PayPal. I'd like to give a spe huge shout out to Salvatore. Salvatore just donated a hundred dollars to the Mikey Pipes Philanthropy Charitable Organization. Ladies and gentlemen, I am a recognized, or well, the company is a recognized charity, sorry, is a recognized 501c3 public charitable organization, guys. I'm putting, I'm, I'm not, I'm not serious, I'm serious. I'm putting my mouth where my money is. 2% of gross receipts of old pipe doctor revenue is going to the Mikey Pipes Philanthropy Charitable Trust organization because we are delivering free or deeply discounted plumbing, heating, and air conditioning services to those who can't afford it. Check it out, Mikey Pipes Philanthropy YouTube channel. Do it now.